I had coffee, but I ran out and I don't have anything else. But let's get into this. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. So we're starting season three. Thank you guys for starting this journey with me because this is my favorite season as far as I can remember. From what I remember rewatching season one to five, just before I did a five part radio show and I still had a radio show. It's a whole part of me that I haven't talked about much in a while. I remember season three being just as strong when I rewatched it as it was when I first saw the season. And that's why I've been very, very excited to start season three, but also at the same time kind of nervous because part of me is wondering whether or not it's gonna actually live up to the appeal. And watching the first episode, The Magnificent Seven, I'm kind of on the fence, but I'm hoping. So season three starts off a few months after the events of All Hell Breaks Loose Part 2. Sam walks in on Dean doing something to a girl, but he says the twins. And this is the first point in where I think that the writer strike immediately started hitting the show. Because clearly in the window, there's one girl. Yet in the car, he mentions twins. I don't know whether he's talking about a previous experience or he's talking about that experience because then there's only one person. There's only one pair of underwear between the two, between Dean and a woman. And yet he's talking about twins. I'm looking into this far too much. But that is something to state that this season was affected by the 2007's writer's strike to the point where they had to shorten down the season to 16 episodes. However, I think it's that shortage of episodes that helped contribute to this being one of my favorite seasons because it makes Dean's predicament, his curse, his turmoil, all the more quick and all the more rampant. It doesn't drag it out. It makes it very short. It really encapsulates the idea of a year. But back onto the episode, a lot of demons got out when the door opened. Some of those demons include the seven deadly sins, which we are first introduced to Envy, where we see him manipulate a woman to kill someone for some shoes. And I remember thinking that those used to be the army and navy shoe sales. Didn't get that bad, but there were some times. Sad note, Army and Navy is actually closed now in Canada. It did not survive the COVID, which is kind of unfortunate. I actually didn't mind those shoe sales. Now, admittedly watching this episode, I was going back and forth between a face to a face. Essentially, every time something stupid happens, including Dean saying, you guys run, I'll hold them off as long as I can, give you some time. I'm gonna die anyways. I don't care. I'm gonna die anyways. I don't care. I'm gonna die anyways. Did I mention that I don't care that I'm gonna die anyways? And then Bobby will come in and just lay down the hammer, especially with the two terrible terrible hunter actors in this episode, being Isaac and Tamara. Cool actors. Kind of interesting how they brought this British lady out, but by God, is their writing horrible. Admittedly, Isaac actually has a pretty good point about not wanting to work with the Winchesters considering they opened up a gate to hell. Not intentionally, of course, but it's funny for him to be mad at them for this because they're gonna do a hell of a lot worse later on. They track down the Envy guy, but then they get cornered. Admittedly, this is actually probably one of the best deaths in Supernatural. Natural. Isaac is told to drink straight Drano. <laughs> Not only is there actually probably the most amount of blood that you see come out of a character, obviously Walking Dead would this later on, but at the time, and even still re-watching it, it's a horrifying death. They drive the car through the wall. They have this kind of funny fight where they're holding off the demons with holy water, but it just makes me think of Zoolander and the gasoline <laughs> They are able to trap Envy in the car, drive back to Bobby's house, in which Bobby lays the smack down on Tamara because she's being a dum-dum. Jim Beaver kills it. Every time that this episode dips into a bit of stupid, he brings it right back up. Definitely making up for that bucket of chicken in season two. <laughs> and the episode ends with them finding out that they are in fact fighting the seven deadly sins and they have this battle at Bobby's house. And it's a cool fight. You really think they're screwed. There's a screenshot, which hopefully I can find it of the brothers sitting in this room with Dean loading the shotgun and Sam making holy water bombs, I think, even though they don't really use them. I thought this was great because you see the two brothers thinking, yeah, shit, well, this is a good way to end it. Obviously it wouldn't end here. And then admittedly there is a cool little twist at the end of the episode where they somehow bring back Isaac. And I don't know if it's another demon or if he's possessed. They don't really illustrate why he's alive and walking around and totally, totally mentally mind gaming her. But she stabs him with that holy root and the demons are like, whatever, this is a one-off character. We don't care, let's go after the main cast. They fight the demons inside and Bobby gives one of the best jokes best jokes to Gluttony, who in fact is actually played by Ernst Hart. And I've met this guy. I got to be on an interview process with him when he worked on a indie full-length feature that I got to be the stills photographer for. And when I say this dude is fucking tall, 
I'm not kidding. He towers. He's a big guy. And yet he's such a nice dude, too. However, after saying those nice things, I do love Bobby's joke about being fat and stupid isn't a way to walk through life. <laughs> Sam almost gets killed, but then he gets saved by Ruby in the coolest introduction, as well as kind of the weirdest introduction. She comes in with her knife, which you remember when this knife meant something? You remember when it wasn't super duper easy to kill demons and they actually weren't pansy asses? She comes in and saves Sam's life and then she says, see you around, Sam, and then walks out and leaves. Writer's strike. Not everything's gonna be solid. Ruby's introduction is kind of oddly dragged out, and I also wonder how she got out of the house without anyone noticing. Even Tamara not even making a point about it. Who, by the way, just disappears at the end of the episode, thank gosh, because again, just not a very well-written character. Neither of them were. At least Isaac had a pretty cool death. And then the episode ends with a really cool question of, if we let the sins out, what else do we let out? And it's not implied until later on in the season, just the gravity of what the brothers have done. Either way, this is a very decent episode of starting off the season. Is it as good in my time of dying? No, it's not. Like I said, it's got some great moments, but it's also got some dumb moments. It's still a good episode for season three, in my opinion. And I'm hoping that everything gets better along the way, and I guess we'll see what happens. But speaking of thoughts, give me your guys' thoughts about episode two of season three, and I'll make sure to say the best ones in the next episode review. Anyways, guys, that's all from me. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.